on the shelf. Cut me out, Jessica, and just enjoy yourself. Groove. Watermelon, watermelon. We're back. This is Down Lee's Voice on KWAM 990 Talk Radio. We're now called as our education, empowerment, and enrichment. And we're in the house with Al Flick, Mr. Jeff Hartwood. And Jessica is in the house, and we're scaring her over there. We're in the house again. We're back. <laughs> I asked her, did they tell her we were firecrackers? <laughs> yeah. I'm Apollo 11. Boom! <laughs> Wait a minute. I normally wear wigs and heels, but I left it at home today. I didn't want to scare you. All right. Let's talk about this good old Alflex. We have the man himself in here, Mr. Jeff Harwood, and Al represent Alflex. Come on, introduce yourself to our listeners. Hi, everyone. At the same, my name is Jeff Harwood. I'm the director for the 18th annual Alflex Film Festival. Woo! Presented by the Music Gay and Lesbian Community. So this is our 18th year. Wow. We begin our opening night September 11th. It's coming Friday. We run September 11th through 17th at Malco Ridgeway Cinema. We'd love to have you. You can find uh, our schedule information and tickets, buy tickets online at our website. That's outflix, O-U-T-F-L-I-X, festival.org. Hmm. So how did this um, start, Outflix? Outflix started actually back in 1997. At that time, it was called the Twinkie Museum. <laughs> so you said Don't Alflix. ask me why. O-U-T. O-U-T-F-L-I-X. So you used out, out. as... A catch on the front. As a, as a catch we're on coming the front. Out. Okay. And we're coming out, and, and it, it connects us to the LGBT community. Okay, got it. Yeah. It was called Twinkie. It was called the Twinkie Museum, and it's <laughs> <laughs> in, two, in 2003 the name changed to Outflex. Okay. And from that, and from that on time, it was it, it presented it uh, at the, the co-op at first at first at first Congo. Mm -hmm. We moved to uh, Malcolm Street on the Square, but now for since the past five years, we have been at Malcolm Ridgeway Cinema. Now, what, what's that address? You would ask me that. Uh, but <laughs> it's it right there not, on our website. It should be yes. it should be easy to find. It's easy to find. Yeah, it's right there on our website. Down at the bottom, there is a map actually of where of where Malcolm Ridgeway Cinema Grill is. Okay. It's over by the uh, Hilton it's at Poplar and Two Forty. Fifty-eight fifty-one Ridgeway Center. Fifty-eight fifty-one Ridgeway Center Parkway. Parkway. Cool. Okay. So. You said 18 years. 18 years, it's yes. Been around, and then you went through a name change in 2000. In 2003. Mm -hmm. So how important is having a film festival for the LGBTQ community? Uh, how important is that for us? Well, if you take a look, um, GLAD, the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Information, every year they come out with reports, one for TV and film and one for movies as well. They just came out with a report for 2014. And if you, they look at the top, the top uh, film production companies. Okay. There were 114 films. Out of those 114 films, only 20 had an LGBTQ character. Wow. 28 characters out of all of those characters. And as they said in their report, most of those characters could have been left on the cutting room floor. <laughs> wow. Because they were not positive representations. So for our community to see a positive representation that we can identify with, whether it's the good, the bad, the, the inane, but this represents us, that helps, that helps us. And because our film festival is international, we have films from all over, from Taiwan, from Spain, from Venezuela, from Mexico, Australia, Canada. We get to see glimpses of the LGBT community in those areas, and we get to connect through film with the communities in those areas as well. That's just one of the reasons for a festival like ours. The other reason is, it's, the festival is not just for us, right. it's for our friends, our allies, and for those who don't even know us yet. When they can come and they can watch us and they can see, you face the issues just like we do? Wow, that's something, and you can learn, and you can and you connect, so that way we can help build a stronger Memphis community through film. Let me ask you this, how, how can a, a local producer or upcoming producer get connected with Alflix to put their films uh, maybe in the rotation list to be chosen for a, a, a slot? Every single year we uh, we start our submissions in January. Okay. So this year was January 28th and we close uh, the 1st of July. Okay. And on our website there is a link during that time where you can click this called for submissions. You click in there, you fill out the form. Okay. 
and you send it to us. Most most filmmakers now submit online, okay. online screeners. They're free to submit that way. You hear that? Are you upcoming um, producers, or you want to get your films out here, your uh, creation, your vision, uh, Eddie and uh, your crew? So January is there, next year. Is that a uh, time frame requirement? Time frame requirement? <laughs> or, you know, it's like an hour, two hours, 30 minutes, mm -hmm. to do a documentary? It could be documentary, it could be fiction, mm -hmm. it could be short films. This year we have, we have uh, 13 narrative features, five documentaries, and 34 shorts. That's fine. Right. So uh, it can be any any length. A short film is generally not anything that's less than an hour. Okay. And a documentary, uh, a full length, is anything that's over that. Um, because of our time schedule, when we schedule, we have two hour slots. Anything that's over two hours may or may not get accepted. If it's extremely good, we may put you at the end of the night where we can actually go over the time limit. Oh, okay. So how many submissions do you get per year? This year, I had 149 narrative features, okay. 70 documentaries, and 426 shorts submitted. And you chose how many? 18 narrative features, five documentaries, and 34 shorts. Wow. That's great. Now, it's not just me doing it. Okay. I could not be doing this. Oh, no. So. Of course not. Of course not. Of course not. <laughs> no, we have, a, we have some very dedicated people who work on it for us on screening panels, volunteer screening panels. Mm -hmm. they, they watch these films, and they rate them one to uh, zero to five of what they think of them. And from their choices, then we then narrow it down to our selection. Yeah, that's, that's great. That's very, very interesting. You know, what's really interesting is that you said it's been out 18 years. Mm -hmm. And I think I heard about Alphablix maybe two or three years ago. Yeah, it's kind of a well, it's kind of the uh, best kept secret <laughs> in Memphis. And it's even in the LGBT community, there's, uh, when we go to Pride or when we go out um, to events at, at the at the community center, there are a lot of people that still don't know that Outflakes exist. We're working to change that. We're getting more, um, we're getting more word out there. This year, uh, organizations such as I Love Memphis, uh, Choose 901, Out 901, they have been very, very helpful in helping us spread the word of, about Outflakes in their tweets and their on their pages. Let me ask you, how, how diverse is the uh, film selection with Outflakes? We tr we try to cover every aspect of the community. Okay, good. LGBT. Uh, youth, seniors, African American, Latino, Asian, anything that we can, everything that we can find. Some years it's a little bit easier than others. Yeah. Um, this year it was extremely hard to find African American films that are LGBT. Stop right there. You hear that? All you African American producers who are uh, these YouTube uh, phenoms, you have the opportunity to submit your uh, movies in January. And uh, Mr. Jeff just said it. They had an issue finding African American films, and I know a lot of guys who are YouTube phenoms. They stay on YouTube, but they're afraid to put their movies out here. Mm -hmm. And you just open up the door, <coughs> January of sixteen. Mm -hmm. I need you guys to get out here and put your movies out <laughs> and get them to Mr. Jeff so we can get your movies uh, on Apple. Go ahead, sir. I'm sorry. Certainly. Um, so when we when we're filling it out, we I actually have a spreadsheet that that lists. All the different aspects of our, of our community are, and I plot those. Mm -hmm. That's what each, what each of the possible choices are, right. and where they fit. Right. Now, we're not going to take a movie just because it fits a slot. Right. It's not a good movie. Absolutely. <laughs> that's worse. That's worse representation for that particular Absolutely. slot. Absolutely. Even if we had nothing at all. I agree with you on that. But uh, we we really do welcome all kinds of films. It can be animated. It can be musical. It can be uh, it can be uh, episodes from a web series. Mm -hmm. You know. Anything that's that is LGBT related, that's the only qualification that it, it does have to be LGBT film. Well, well, see, you you just uh, killed the myth that uh, people were saying that Outflakes never put out the uh, African American LGBT films, and right there, I know plenty of guys who said that, but you just killed that myth because you said it was a lack of those films being submitted. And this the other year, thing this year, you said it has to be on some. And there's some substance. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> this you can't year, just bring yeah. anything. Right. This year we were able to find three films uh, that relate to the African American community. One was called one is called Nas and Molly, mm -hmm. which uh, centers on two uh, young African American Muslim young men mm -hmm. in Brooklyn. Oh, that's oh, okay. um, they who are in the closet, mm -hmm. and it's the it's the conflict between their their own society, right. Muslim society. And society at large, because they are Muslim, because they are African American, then they're looked as suspect already. Now, in their own society, they have to remain in the closet because, as gay young men, they are suspect. Right. 
So let me ask you this, what about uh, transgender films? Transgender films, yes. We um, have two transgender films this year. Uh, one is a documentary called In the Turn. Okay. It's about a young uh, transgender girl, Caitlin, 10 years old. Wow. I, I think I saw that. Mm -hmm. all, all of our trailers are online, yeah. okay. available on our Facebook page or on our webpage. Caitlin has a series <clears throat> come on every one No, this is a different one. Okay. This is a different young okay. girl. Uh, she's, she's 10 years old. Um, and since her transition, she's not allowed to play in sports anymore. She's not allowed to. She's bullied by staff, by, te yeah, by that's the same teachers. Part. She plays hockey, ho soccer. She, she plays roller. She's roller derby. Oh, okay. Does roller derby. Okay. Um, the uh, in fact, at one time out of school, she was thrown into a dumpster. Wow. And the whole documentary is focus is focused on her mother trying to help her to become the person that she is. And she finds a connection with the queer roller derby league, the Jean Regime. Okay. And it's that story there. Uh, the other one we have is called uh, Two for One. Okay, hold that thought. Mm -hmm. We're at our second break, and we're going to come back with Two okay. for One. We're having a great conversation with Alflex Film Festival, Mr. Jeff Harwood himself. And I'm sitting here with the G to the Q, and I have Eddie and Robert in the house, and Miss Jessica, we're breaking her in. <laughs> and this is the Unleashed Voice on KWAM 990 Talk Radio. We're going to be right back after this pause for the calls. <laughs> 